Hello, today I'm at Meadow Lane, the home of Notts County, and my guest is Jimmy Cyril. Now, Jimmy is not a household name. He never played at the highest level, and he never really managed a top club, although he once took Notts County into the old first division. But I'll tell you this, everybody in the game knows Jimmy Cyril. They respect him, and what's more, they regard him as one of the canniest men around. Jimmy, born in 1922, had a career that started briefly at Celtic, then Bradford Park Avenue, Brighton and Aldershot, no high spots there. As a manager, he started at Brentford, three times he took the reins at Notts County, and once at Sheffield United. And his enthusiasm for the game has never for a moment flagged through all these years. Jimmy, you've had a, a long footballing life, and I, I figure it's always been a pretty happy one, hasn't it? Yeah, actually, I signed professional in 1939. And then I went off, to, I served five years as a coppersmith, and then I went off to the war with the Navy. And when I come back from the, from the war, I signed for Glasgow Celtic. Now, when I, when I signed for Glasgow Celtic, I played uh, one New Year's Day, uh, the day before New Year's Day, for against Glasgow Rangers reserves. And then I went off to play against Queen of the South, and I was inside right, and Jimmy Delaney yes. was my outside right, eh? Famous yes. player, yes. eh? Came down and to Manchester United, didn't of he? Of course yeah, he yes, did. Yes, he was yes. training with us yes. then. And uh, but in the meantime, Arsenal wanted me. Really? Because I hadn't signed for Celtic. So I went up to I went up to Arsenal and they had two managers at the time, Alisson and Whitaker. Yes. You know, they had two managers. Yes. And uh, Cathy, I'd, I'd got married when I, because Cathy had said to me, before I got demobbed, as you might call it, she says, Jimmy, I want you to marry me. <laughs> I said, hey, Cathy, I says, I might not come back. <laughs> she says, I don't care. <laughs> So I got leave to get married, you understand? Yes. So she come down with me. Yes. And uh, when we're sitting there, you know the big bust that's across there? Yes, Herbert Chapman, the big... A big yeah. bust yeah. of Chapman yeah. sitting there waiting it, for to get Highbury. called up the stairs. Yeah. And I says to Cathy, I don't fancy this. She says, don't you? And Arsenal was the biggest club in, in this country. Eh? Why didn't you fancy it, Jimmy? I just don't know. You know, I, but I'd also... The Celtic thing, and Rangers were interested in me. You understand? Mm. So I had a choice, you know. But I just don't know. I'd stayed, I stayed in lodgings, as you might call them. You know, in them days, it's different from now, yes. isn't it? And then I travelled the tube over there to Highbury, and it was really <laughs> whatever. <laughs> she says, "Don't you, Jimmy?" No, I says, "No. Well, I'll go up and see them." Do you know what they did to me? Within a week, they sent me a lovely letter, you know, thanking yeah. me for coming, hoping I'd do well in the future. Tremendous, yeah. eh? Mm. So how did you come to join Bradford then? <coughs> well, they released me at Celtic, you understand? And I had lots of opportunities, different clubs. And they come on, and they offered me a fair bit of money by, by now stand, you know, mm. them standards. Yes. And there was a number of clubs. So I said, yeah, I'll go there, providing you find me accommodation. See? And I, I enjoyed a couple of years there. And that was Br Bradford Park Avenue, wasn't Park it? Park Avenue, yes, 18,000 yes. people. Yes. And you played with some pretty phenomenal players there. Well, there was Leo Lutti, who'd done it all for Derby County. Yes. There was a skinny Elliot, Billy, <laughs> Billy Elliot, yes. who went on to play for Sunderland in England. And there was Len Shackleton who went on. Yeah, they had good players. Yes, yes. Shack was a, Shackleton was a young man at that time, presumably. I mean, he was a, a phenomenal talent, wasn't he? Tremendous player. He could do wonderful things with the football. He had a trick like Gento had. The, 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 ball, the ball, as he's running, and he gets ahead of the ball, and then he would lift it over the head of the opponent, you know, like yes, Gento. Yes. See, I watched Gento training. Yes. Remember when Real Madrid come? I spent yes. three days watching them. Mm. I watched them all training. 
and Gentho was practicing that. I wish I could have could do that. I was a tremendous skill, eh? And a good guy? Oh, aye. And his cousin, I can't remember his name now, we were friends because he had went off to Sunderland, you understand? Did you did you uh, have an opportunity other than Arsenal to play at, at, at a higher level than that? No. 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 Eh, Bolton were a big team then. Big, big team, eh? Yes. And they were interested in me at one stage. But you can't eh, play for a bigger team in Britain than Glasgow Celtic, no. give or take, eh? No. So then the manager career starts. Yeah. Uh, and that started uh, at Brentford, yeah? No. Oh, the manager. No, I, I went to. Uh, when I was at Aldershot, the, the manager, Gordon Clark, he took the trainer away to West Brom. Yes. And the other fella, Harry, went to. He went to Norwich. So they're nobody. It was Harry Evans. No, no. So Harry Evans gets the job. He yeah. was the secretary. Right. He takes over and he comes to my door right. and he said, I said, I'm going to start on the 1st of August. So he said, come and work with me. He said, do you know about this game a bit? So I said, yeah. I said, provided I get the manager's Gordon Clark's bungalow. <laughs> he said, of course you can have the bungalow. <laughs> so there it started. And I trained him for three weeks or so until... The season started, and we went to Reading, and we won five one. And within a month, they said, "You be, you be the trainer." Right. And Harry, see. And then I'll tell you an interesting story. You know, being at Lilish Hall, I knew them all, to the Shankles and the whoever you understand. And the Billy Nicholson was the, see, I knew him, because I knew them all, didn't mm. I? Because I was mm. I was serving my time. Mm. And the only job I ever wanted, really, I've never applied for a job, was the job at Tottenham. So Harry Evans come, because I never had a car, you know, because footballers, and I didn't want to spend money in a car. He goes, I might need it, don't I? Mm. So Harry Evans come, and he picked me up. To, they took me to Southampton to fly from Jersey, to do to, to Jersey, see? So uh, Nicholson was looking for a coach, a trainer, for whatever reason. And Harry was Tottenham, wasn't he? You know, he was Tottenham all mm. the time in mm. his life. And I said to him, Say, when you're there, say, to tell Bill that I'd be interested in this job. Fortnight later, he picked me up in the car. He had an interview. Did he? <laughs> he had an interview <laughs> for the job. And he got the job. Yes. In the good days yes. when they, they, they won this and that and whatever, eh? Yes. Mm -mm. Yes. I want to move on now to Brentford. Go on then. To Brentford. Because um, that, that was when you really got stuck into the manager's job there. And they had just, they were just about existing, weren't they? They'd almost gone to the wall at this point, Brentford. Aye. Uh, and you worked very hard doing all the jobs imaginable to keep them going, yeah? Now, what happened was uh, Tom Cavana was the manager. Tommy Cavana, yes. And he come and he says, Jimmy, will you come and be the trainer at the uh, at the Brentford? Yeah, I says it's time I had a change. So I went to Brentford and he they sacked Tom. You know. Mm. So they asked me would I look after the job. We had fifteen, sixteen players, two or three amateurs, but the amateurs were good players in them days mm. in that London mm. area. Mm. Eh, the Enfields in them, mm. they could play. So I took the job, and about after a month, Dennis Piggott come and he says, Jimmy... He was the secretary of the club. Secretary. Yeah. There was only myself, Piggott, and a, a lady called Kath. The yes. only three of us. Yes. He said, they want you to be the manager. He says, but they've got all the applications, and they're going to decide tonight. So I says, I'm not applying, Dennis. But he says, well, look, consider you unless you... He's written a letter. Well, I said, you write the letter and I'll sign it. <laughs> so I signed it eh? yes. and I got the job. Yes. So how did the Notts County, but tell me how your association with Notts County began, Jimmy. Well, Mr. Dunnett took over this club. He bought this club. He and another man, you understand? Yes. So he come for me. So I said, yeah. 
alcohol. But what had happened was this. I was a bit clever here. Because <coughs> I'd seen the Notts County play. And I thought, they've got some good young players, see? Now, who were these good young players that you saw? Well, there was Needham. David Needham, who went to Nottingham Forest. Yeah. Uh, there was Brian Stubbs. Oh, yes. There was Nixon outside, right? You know, there were, there yes. were, there were young players. And they, they had no old players. Not that I was interested in that. I'd seen them play. Right. You understand? I right. thought, you've got a chance there to educate these yes. people. Yes. And at that time, I mean, y you also had players like Don Masson, did you? Was Don Masson around that Don time? Don Masson was here. Yes. Yeah. You know, you asked me about the players, mm. and uh, my memory of them. <laughs> yeah, Don was here. Wonderful player, eh? Yes. Don Masson was here. Tremendous player, tremendous vision, eh? Great captain, eh? Yes. And he and I had a good understanding in as much as he would say, boss, this is not right, and that's not right. You understand? He had privilege to do that, you yes. understand? Because yes. we're working for the one cause. Of course. And then Scotland were looking for players. And the, the manager of Scotland, the fellow from Hibernians, oh, gee, was playing the famous five. Willie Ormond? No, no. no not Willie Ormond. Anyway, he come on the phone and says, Jimmy, have you got any players to play for Scotland and I said yeah I've got one but I said you'll not pick him because we're in the third division you see so he never picked him but then one day the chairman said to me Jimmy he said I've agreed a deal with the, the chairman of the Queen's Park Rangers to sell Don Masson who was the chairman Jim Gregory Jim Gregory mm. So I took I took the little fella down on the train and I said to him, now look, when you go in there, don't you sign nothing until you come and talk to me. I'm selling him. Mm. You, know, you mm. understand? Mm. And I'm going to see that he's getting a good deal. Mm. So next thing I know, David Sexton's come out and he says, Jimmy, he said the uh, don't sign him. So in the train, I says to him, I told you to come and see me first, you know. Yes. And, the li and then the little fellow was successful because QPR had a good team there in the first division. Had a great side. They very nearly won the championship, didn't they? Tremendous. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Ah, he was a good player, little Dolly. Eh? But you did leave here, didn't you, yourself then? Because you then, when you left, you went to Sheffield United, although you'd done really well here. Well, what happened was uh, I was offered the job at Sheffield United because they had they had apprentices. You know, I never had apprentices. And they had a hostel and whatever. Yes. And I thought I could maybe get to Europe. It was the same with Brentford. Yes. You know, Brentford with that big area. Look at there, mm. if, if you could get that going. The most I got there at Brentford was 14,000. So they approached Mr. Dunnett, so he come and he says to me, Jimmy, Sheffield United's not big enough for you. But he says, you can go and speak to them. So I went and agreed to join them. And they were in the old first division then, weren't they? They were in the first yeah. division, not doing well. Yes. But they were no money, no. totally no money. Eh? I, I, I had one good player, Tony Curry, and uh, we had to sell him. And Tony was a great player in practice, tremendous player. But on a Saturday, he never was as good. You know, I'm talking about movement, mm. running mm. about, working, mm. you know. Mm. Tremendous footballer yes. Tony Curry was. Yes. And I sold him to Leeds. And I got a hundred. I think it was a hundred seventy thousand or eighty thousand for him, and I got thirty thousand. And I bought Chick Hamilton for thirty thousand of that, yes. you know, from yes. from Aston Villa. Yeah. Mm -mm. Yes. So they were bad days there, but uh, I enjoyed it. And and I, I used to live all week. Kathy and I used to live all week in the hostel, because I make sure that these kiddies are yes. coming up right. Yes. But what happened was the players were getting 
getting old. And I had two goalkeepers, Scottish internationals, both of them. And we had to score two goals to get a draw. You know? <laughs> so we played this day at uh, Brighton, uh, Ipswich. And we got beat. And we're now another away game at Stoke. And we got beat. And I decided to chuck it. So I said to the chair, when I'm finished... So, Jimmy, when you, you leave Sheffield United, you then come back here to Notts County and probably have your most successful time there because you took them for the first time in, I think it's something like 55 years, into the old first division. I mean, they must have been great. They had a great time, no, the first time The first time I was here was in the fourth division. Yeah. I won that quickly. And then I won the third division quickly, I think so, you know, before I went to Sheffield, yes. if I can remember rightly. But now you're in the first division. Now you get them into the first division, don't you? N well, that was after yes, Sheffield. Yes, after Sheffield, you come here and you get... They were not doing well. No. Ron Fenton was the manager. And Mr. Dunnett come, he says, within days of me leaving, he says, I want you back as the manager. You come? I said, of course I will. So I come back. And then we, we shot up and won the second division into the first division. Yes. You had a right-hand man at that time, though, didn't you? Mr. Howard Wilkinson. Yeah. I'd known Howard for years. I'd tried to buy him when he was an outside right at the Brighton. You know, yeah, because he was at Brighton as a player. Of course, of course aye. Yeah. Not with me. No, no. No, he was there with a big Scotch fella. I can't remember. Mm. Uh, a manager. And uh, I tried to buy him. But he was the, 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 the dash, not the national coach, the area coach for... FA for that area and the Sheffield area. So uh, he used to come to the talk to me and whatever. He'd already been manager at Boston. Yes. You know? And he was very sensible. So I invited him to come and work here as an assistant to you know, uh, he under me. Yes. And he was excellent. Eh? But once again I had control of what the first team was doing. But I never worked with them as much. You know, I only worked the tactics and whatever. But Howard trained them and coached them, worked them hard, sensibly. But he done well, did Howard, see? And we succeeded, and we went, as you say, to the first division with him. Tell me, when you look, when you look back on a, on a long footballing life now, Jimmy, um... I mean, who were the who were the great who were the great managers that you that you associated with? Do you think? I mean, you've mentioned Bill Shankly, for example. You've mentioned Bill Nicholson, Matt Busby, I suppose, would be another one. Aye, Alan Brown was a great manager, the he one that took Burnley, Burnley into winning cups and whatever. Big George Smith at Portsmouth was another. Eh? Yes, Th there was a number of them. Peter Doherty was another many an argument I had with Peter because yes. Peter, what he said went, you know, about football yes. and uh, many an argument I had with Peter yes. when I meet him yes. yeah, uh, they, were, they were excellent yes. people eh? yes. Do you have good memories of, of uh, Bill Shankly though? Aye, Willie and I were great friends because I knew where all the players were in Glasgow you know I knew them, but virtually them all. And Willie used to come up in the summertime looking for players for Workington or Grimsby or Carlisle or whatever. And uh, then I got to know him and his uh, wife. Is it Bella? Was Nessie, it Bella? Nessie. Wasn't Nessie. It? Yeah. Aye. You know, so yeah. I was friendly with him through the years. And uh, Willie then offered me the job at Huddersfield as a trainer. Oh, really? Uh, he was going to sack Eddie Boot. So I said, yeah, I'll join you next summer. You know, he come, say, about December time. And then he come on the phone and says, Jimmy, I'm joining Liverpool. I can't take you with me. And I said, Willie, I don't care. I said, you do what's best. He says, I've got a good staff here. So fine. So we left it that way. Tell me about another great manager. Just wanted to, to finish talking about managers because you would have had some great battles across the Trent. I mean, where Mr. Clough was making Nottingham Forest fly at this time while you were doing your best here. 
How did you get on with him? And what did you think of him? Oh, he was a tremendous man. A eh? tremendous manager. I think we played three or four games before they beat us when he was the manager. Yeah. You know, uh, certainly in the county cups and whatever, you know, understand? And then they started beating us. No, he was a good manager, excellent manager, eh? Excellent man manager, eh? Mm. Whatever you might think of him. I always thought about him was this. If ever I went to war, I'd link him in my side. You know, that was my impression mm. of him. You mm. know, I'll pick you. Mm. Mm. Uh, what about the quality of the game today? Th that is actually played on the pitch. The, the football today, there's tremendous players, tremendous young players. You look at the young left full back, for instance, at uh, Chelsea, 18 years of age. I don't know, 20 years. I don't, mm. I don't know. You look at the black boy at, uh, at Newcastle, people like that, you know, yeah. coming through. Mm. But the sad bit about it is because of bringing these foreigners in and the amount of money that they're getting, they are not against them getting money, you understand? That's a different side of it. Because everybody says they get paid too much. And I say, so they do. But what if it's your son? Yes. Oh, it's a different game, isn't it? Yes. No, but what's happening is the, the players who are there getting reasonable pay, but not good enough because of the foreigner. They move down, and the clubs below them can't afford to take them or pay them. Eh? And when they talk to me, Brian, about they get paid too much, I says, I so they do. Eh? But what about the young man who's went off to Hartley Pool, maybe £200 a week, three children and a wife? Eh? Do they get paid too much? Jimmy, when you look back on, you, on uh, an incredible career, it's something I ask all my guests. If there's one supreme moment in your footballing life that you pick out that surpasses all the others, what would that moment be? Maybe the day we beat Chelsea at Chelsea to get promoted to the then first division. That might, that might be... No, I have uh, so many good times, eh? Even the bad times are good. <laughs> what a smile. <laughs> hey, <laughs> Wish you well. It's been great to talk to you Thank again, you Jimmy. Very Thank much, you very uh, much. Thank you. Supporters in attendance as Neil Redfern's free kick gave Wigan the lead over Knox County. Matt Redmile managed to somersault Simon Howarth to give Redfern the chance to score again from just 12 yards. <laughs> 